This tutorial will show you how to install the program structure for population genetic analysis on an Ubuntu Linux operating system running version 20.04. Please note that this is separate from my tutorial for installing fast structure on an Ubuntu Linux machine. This tutorial is for the classic version of structure. If you don't have a computer running the Ubuntu Linux operating system, fear not. You can use virtualization software to have Ubuntu Linux running on top of your Windows or Mac OS X computer. The software to do that is called VirtualBox. And in fact, I am running my copy of Ubuntu Linux right now within VirtualBox on my Mac computer. For instructions on installing Ubuntu Linux within VirtualBox within your Windows or Mac computer, please see the notes accompany, accompanying this video. The first thing to note is that the structure software, not fast structure, but the classic structure software is quite old. The last updates on the website are from, uh, this is made in 2020, so the last updates are from eight years ago. This software was developed for 32-bit operating systems, whereas modern operating systems are 64-bit. This means that we first need to install 32-bit drivers within our Ubuntu Linux operating system to emulate the 32-bit environment. The, the, the website that I am copying this link from for installing the drivers is provided in the notes accompanying this video. So I'm going to copy this command to install the drivers and I'm going to open up a terminal window. So I'm going to do a search for terminal. There we are. And I'm going to paste in this command. It asks me for my password. I hit Y because I want to continue. Enter. It is very important that after the new drivers are installed that we close out of terminal so that when it comes time for us to run structure, it will have refreshed with the new drivers. Next, we need to download the command line version of structure. I'm using the command line version of structure because the software is so out of date that it's very hard to get the drop-down window version of Structure to run. In fact, I've only successfully been able to get it to run on a Windows machine, whereas the command line version of Structure can run within Ubuntu Linux. You can download the command line version from the Structure website, and you go to Download Package Without Front End, and you click on for Linux. Or, what I recommend is to download it from my website, joshbanta.com. From there, click on Tutorials and scroll to the bottom for the data accompanying this tutorial. The reason I suggest downloading Structure from my website is that I have included some extra files so that I can demo for you how to use Structure once you have it installed. So if you download from my website, you click on it. Click on the download button and select direct download. And it downloads pretty much right away. Next, we're going to open up a finder window. And we're going to navigate to the Downloads folder. Once we're in there, we're going to double-click on StructureLinux.zip. 
This will bring up an archive manager program that lets us look inside of this zipped file. Double click on Structure Linux. This folder called Console contains the software and the sample data. To get it out of the compressed zip archive, go back to your Finder window, go to your Home folder, and look for your bin directory. If you do not have a bin directory, you can create one by highlighting the Home folder and selecting New Folder from the drop-down menu. Double-click on the bin folder. Drag the folder called Console into your bin folder to decompress it and place it within that bin folder. Now you can close the Archive Manager software. We are ready to run Structure. Before we do, we need to alter these two files here called main params and extra params. You will always need to alter these depending upon the specific data that you intend to run in Structure. We will be running this file called output.prn, which I have provided to you, which is some sample data. I prefer my sample data over the sample data that is provided by default with Structure. I also have included a file called structureinfo.csv, which includes information about the number of loci in my data set, as well as the number of individuals in the data set. So if we double click on it, it'll attempt to open it in LibreOffice, but all we need is the information that's right here. The number of loci is 5,546 and the number of individuals is 8. The no data character in my data set is negative 999. I have my data set set up so that it includes a row of marker names of, for, the, for the loci, as well as a column of individual names. So let's start by editing this file called main params. Don't worry about this setting here for defining the number of k clusters. This setting will be overwritten later on when we add some extra commands in the terminal window. It's important though to set these two parameters appropriately. The burn-in and then the number of runs after the burn-in. Typically you want your burn-in period to be 10,000, 100,000, or even a million. You want your number of runs after the burn-in period to be 100,000, a million, or even 10 million. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to set these numbers far lower. The file that we will be using that we will to run the structure analysis on is called output.prn. As I told you previously, num ins means number of individuals. There are eight individuals, and there are 5,546 loci. I didn't tell you, but the ploidy of our data set is diploid, so we keep this number here as two. The missing data value in our data set is negative 999. Our data contains labels for the individuals. We do not have data about putative populations. Our data contains a row of marker names of labels for the loci. So we keep that as a one and we keep that as a one. Next, we hit Control S to save, or you can click this button here for save. Close main params. Next, open up the extra parameters file, extra params. We will keep most of the default settings in here, but we do need to make a few important changes. There is no population data or location information included in my data file. So we need to take this setting here for 
loci uh, s pop, and we need to set it to zero. Next, hit save and close the extra params file. Now we are ready to run structure. Open up a fresh copy of terminal. We need to navigate to the folder that includes structure, as well as our sample data. Make sure that your data is included within the folder where you have the structure program. It's possible to have the data in a different folder, but it makes running it from the command line more difficult. So in our case, we're going to go to the bin folder from our home directory, and then we're going to go to that folder called console, which is where the structure program as well as our sample data is located. Here is how you run structure. That's the command. And then we're going to tell it how many K groups we want. So we want to run structure first for K equals one group. And we'll make the output file k1run.txt, although we could call this output file anything that we like. I'm going to use a semicolon so that we can run multiple different structure run, uh, runs one after the other. I'm going to put in the structure command again. This time I'm going to do it for k equals 1 again. This is so, because it is recommended that you have multiple replicates of your structure runs for each number of inferred ancestral groups. This one I will call k1 run 2.txt. Next, I'm going to run structure for three groups, I'm sorry, for two groups. Use an use a uppercase K. I don't know if it matters, but the instructions say to use an uppercase K from the, from the Pritchard lab. And I'll make the last output here, k2run2.txt. In reality, you would do more than uh, test for just two different um, numbers of an or inferred ancestral groups. I have a, a more thorough tutorial about how to run structure more appropriately in addition to this one on my website. The main purpose of this website was just to show you how to install structure and how to use it from the command line. In terms of the, the settings that you use here, see my next tutorial for some more in-depth instructions on that. But for now, I just want to give you something that will run where we're, we're, we're trying with inferring one inferred ancestor and, in trying, and trying two inferred ancestral groups. And for each one of those scenarios, we're, we're doing two replicate runs. There's the first replicate run. There's the second replicate run. For in two inferred ancestral groups, there's the first replicate run. There's the second replicate run. I should have assigned this virtual machine more memory. It ran out of space, but it did do the first three runs. So we have both replicates for this scenario of one uh, inferred ancestral group, and we have one replicate for the run in, is assuming uh, inferring uh, two ancestral groups. Although uh, if I would have had any reasonable amount of uh, memory allocated to this virtual machine, 
it, it would have run the, um, the second replicate as well. But that's a minor issue. I'd recommend assigning at least four gigs of memory to your virtual machine if you can. I did not. I have a one gig of memory assigned. But if we look at one of these results files, we'll see that structure ran perfectly normally. We can look at another one here for uh, two inferred ancestors. And we can see that it ran perfectly normally and assigned our individuals among the two inferred ancestors. I hope this has been helpful. See more tutorials at my website, joshbanta.com.